Well, good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 1st, 2020, recorded around 9.19 a.m. Eastern Time. Well, a couple of things going on here today. We are focusing solely on Hurricane Isaias with maximum sustained winds of 85 miles per hour pressure down to 987 millibars. It is struggling this morning. We'll get to why that is here in a second. But first and foremost, taking a look here at the watch and warnings again. Hurricane warnings in effect for all of the northern Bahamas as this is approaching Andrews Island and Nassau. This is a very disor a relatively disorganized hurricane this morning. But nonetheless, this is expected to continue on its west-northwest trajectory here. And it's going to get awfully close to the coast of Florida where hurricane warnings are in effect. Tropical storm warnings down to the North Miami Beach area. Tropical storm watches up to near Jacksonville with hurricane warnings in between from Deerfield Beach all the way through the Flagler Volusia County line. Later in the week or early into the beginning of you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is when we could start having to be talking about impacts here to the Carolinas again. This is all going to hinge on what happens over the next 12 hours with Isaias down here and where it tracks into Florida. And we'll talk about that here in just a second or two. But again, this is going to relatively determine the impacts that the Carolinas are going to see because if this does manage to creep a little bit further to the west, maybe it's weaker or makes landfall here in Florida, that's going to reduce the impacts over here across the Carolinas and northeast. But if this does manage to stay offshore and maintain its act over here, it could be a little bit stronger on approach to the Carolinas. And we'll talk about all of those possibilities here in a brief second. So what's going on? Why is it disorganized? Well, you can see, first of all, the cloud field here is relatively disorganized. This is from tropicaltibbets.com, by the way. The latest recon plane that was in there did find pressures of about 986 to 987 millibars. Uh, however, the NOAA reconnaissance aircraft uh, suggested that our pressures are possibly a little bit lower uh, down into the uh, about 980s or so. So we'll have to see here. You can see the mean sea level pressure dipping down here to just about 980, but with a flight level wind here of about 25 knots. So that's not the center that they kind of recorded in. You notice that they've now not been really picking up any hurricane force flight level winds, so, but I believe that's probably because the eye wall for the most part with the hurricane winds are on shore. And you can see here, um, the pressure was about 993 here down to 991. Uh, the reason why this is is because the eye wall is actually a little bit more onshore, the, the eye is, and the aircraft plane that is in there is, is getting winds of still about, you know, 20 to 30 knots. And it's trying to extrapolate that, but 991 is a little bit erroneously high. The recon plane that was in there from the NOAA P3 is suggesting about 987 uh, to 983, so roughly in that range. Now, what's going on, though, is rather important for its long-term feature of uh, Isaias here. First of all, a couple of things to note. First of all, you notice this very dry air over here. And to get a better visualization of that, we'll take a look at that here in a minute on a different uh, vis visualization. But the storm is very compact. It's not a very big storm. And it, it's not as small as Gonzalo was. But this also is now playing a factor where this dry air is kind of just eating up a lot of this convection on the north side of it. So really what the game is going to be is how is the islands going to impact uh, Isaias? If it negatively impacts this, it could be a weaker storm on approach to Florida, make landfall, and we really never hear of it again other than maybe some rainfall and gusty winds on approach. However, if this does manage to still hold a little bit of an inner core as it is approaching, it is possible that this could bring hurricane conditions, and that's why we have hurricane warnings up for portions of the Florida coastline here from uh, Deerfield Beach to the Flag of Volusia County line, and that's important. Now, again, this doesn't have a lot of uh, cold cloud tops with it. In fact, temperatures uh, are approaching almost about uh, minus 70 Celsius up here, so it's still cold, but it's not cold, cold cloud tops, you know, minus 75, 80, 85. And if we take a look here, this is from our uh, 
trusty friends here over at Rathion and uh, Unidata in the NCAR. This is the AWIPS. Uh, this is what the, the Weather Service Office uses and, you know, different government officials. But um, this is a free to download, by the way. If you want the um, link to download this, I will provide that in the description down below. Um, but once again, you know, this is the latest um, sweep as of uh, 921 this morning. And a couple of things to point out here. First of all, you notice all of this dry air, dry stable air. That's kind of what these yellows and reds are. This is the mid-level water vapor. And this is a lot of dry air just sitting over top of the system, basically. And what's happening is we're getting a little bit of southeastern or southwesterly shear. And if this wasn't getting sheared, this probably would be a stronger hurricane, undoubtedly. But the fact that we got about 20 knots of shear being blown into this is kind of uh, eroding a lot of its convective uh, canopy, basically. And you can see a lot of this dry air now kind of being filtered into the system. And again, this is pretty close to the islands. I mean, the Andrews Islands are literally right about here. Uh, that's the coast of the Andrews Islands. This is Nassau right over here. So again, impacts are going to be felt. Hurricane uh, conditions are possible and or likely for these areas. But again, what happens after this is very important because as it continues to track off generally, uh, towards the north and west here, where this eventually goes after that is determinate on what it's going to do here in Florida and in the Bahamas even. A weaker system is going to tend to get further to the west. And we can look at that here on the spaghetti uh, plots here. Uh, this is the 12Z guidance from tropicaltippets.com. Again, the one word of caution here, this does not imply that we have confidence that this is going to stay offshore and impact South Carolina and North Carolina. We do not have a 100% confidence that that is going to happen where we see this very tightly compacted uh, thing like that that's a supply or implies that we have high confidence. In fact, there's a range of possibilities. So the range of possibilities, we'll go ahead and kind of zoom in here. First of all, you notice how, you know, one of the, the outlier models brings us as a landfall. It's a weaker system on, on, you know, coming on in and then riding the coast here. Really not any chance to actually organize here uh, once it does so. However, most of the model guidance is suggesting this comes awfully close to the Florida coast here and then turns on out to sea as an upper trough is now approaching. And we can see that upper trough here on the uh, GO satellite. This is the, again, the water vapor satellite imagery. This is our trough right here. That's our trough kind of digging in like that. This is our jet max that's kind of flowing through like that. So our jet max is right in through this area right here. Our upper level high pressure is sitting out here. And again, that's what's mainly steering this as an upper level pre uh, upper level future here is now kind of steering this generally towards the west northwest here. And again, this upper trough is going to now start digging in. We'll draw that just a tad bit better. That upper trough now is going to start digging in and moving off towards generally the east and northeast here and what that's going to do is now allow uh, for this uh, for hurricane isaias to eventually uh, begin to feel the upper tug in the trough and this trough is now going to start to erode this bigger ridge of high pressure out here and that's important excuse me that's important because now we're going to start to see this turn and exactly when that turn occurs is going to be very important for its future down here in the Carolinas and eventually even the northeastern United States where impacts could also be felt there. Currently, the expectation is this is going to come awfully close here to Florida, probably something much like that, only about 20 or so miles offshore. And that will bring coastal impacts even as far inland as Seminole and Orange County. That's Seminole County right there, Orange County. Lake County, you are not in a tropical storm warning, but Orange County, you are Seminole, you are Volusia, you are for inland Volusia. Coastal Volusia hurricane uh, warning is in effect. So this is something to take seriously, and it's not all set in stone that this is going to die out or weaken, but it's also not likely to intensify much more than current. Again, so a lot here is going to depend on what's going to happen here in Florida, in the Bahamas over the next 12 to 24 hours or so. This is also slowing down a little bit. And you can also start to see here how the wind field 
excuse me, this is the wind field here for the eight o'clock advisory. And you can see here that tropical storm force winds extend out a pretty significant bout from the center. This is the center of circulation right here. And you notice how these tropical storm force winds extend out pretty far from the center here, all the way up, almost up to near uh, Albaco and uh, Marsh Harbor and Grand Bahama. This, as it trends more towards the west, northwest here, that's going to bring this uh, onshore here and this onshore flow is what's going to cause storm surge. And that storm surge in this area is generally from North Miami Beach to Jupiter Be or Jupiter Inlet here, about one to three feet of storm surge with two to uh, four feet of storm surge from Ponte Verde Beach, which is near Jacksonville, all the way to Jupiter Inlet. So very important to understand that amongst with the wind threat, amongst with the heavy rainfall, storm surge is also a problem. And real quick, the, the rainfall uh, totals here, again, highly dependent on the track. Right now, you can see that most of East Central Florida and the Florida East Coast is embedded within that about two to four inches of rain, isolated amounts down here south uh, in like a Okeechobee region. And north of Miami, north of Hollywood Beach could be approaching about six inches. But you also notice that six inch mark approaching the Florida East Coast here. So it is important to understand that any uh, deviation in the track to the left or to the right, to the west or, or east, is going to have implications in terms of who gets the rain, who gets the storms or the, the, the uh, heaviest winds that core is going to become dangerously closed onshore. And if we take a really quick look at here at the interactive, where we can really see this track forecast here from the Hurricane Center. Again, this is coming very close. This is the official Hurricane Center track as of 8, uh, 8 a.m. for the, this is based on the five o'clock advisory track because it only gets updated every uh, couple of hours, not at the intermittent advisories. Basically, tropical storm warnings for Lake Okeechobee as a whole, hurricane warnings, storm surge warnings all the way up here. Again, this is going to provide for this track really close to the coastline here. And again, any slight deviation in a wobble could bring the core on shore. Conversely, any small wobble could take it far enough offshore that we don't get the hurricane conditions across the coastline. But the current consensus is that this is going to come within probably about you know 20 to 30 miles of the coastline. But this is also a smaller storm, and as such, it's not as big as like the likes of Hurricane uh, Dorian or Hurricane Matthew last year. So it's not necessarily to that extent and to that uh, degree. Now, the eye wall here, again, this is what's going on right now. The eye circulation, very stretched out and elongated, not really the best organized structure. So this is indicating that our eye wall structure is starting to decay a little bit. Now, you know, fluctuations in intensity are definitely likely today. And I would not be surprised to see maybe a bout of weakening Excuse me. I would not be surprised to see a, a, about a weakening uh, today and maybe perhaps going below hurricane force. But again, the bottom line is if you live in Florida, you need to be preparing for a hurricane, you know, unlikely to intensify much more. But this could still be a stronger Category 1 hurricane upon upon uh, making its closest approach or landfall in Florida. And it's very possible uh, that this could make landfall, especially if this is a weaker storm. It's probably going to make landfall if, if it would be a weaker, a weaker storm. It certainly would have the chance to make landfall for the Carolinas, uh, including South Carolina, and then all the way up the coast here into the northeast. You need to be monitoring the progress of what happens with the Hurricane Isaias down in Florida because your local impacts are going to be determined on the next 24, uh, you know, 12 to 24, even 48 hours. This is going to start to slow down considerably uh, here. And real quickly, if we look at the three-day cone from the National Hurricane Center, you notice this is 2 a.m. Sunday approaching the coast here as a hurricane. 2 p.m. Sunday, still approaching the coast, and only by 2 a.m. Monday, now it's beginning to slowly pull away. So for you folks in the Florida coast, you're going to have a persistent time where there is a, um, you know, persistent time where there's going to be impacts felt. This isn't necessarily moving at a brisk 20, 
miles per hour. So this is now slowing down about northwest of 12. So very important to understand these impacts are going to be felt over a longer duration. That doesn't mean that they're going to be more severe, but the impacts are going to be felt over a longer duration. So it's very important to understand that. Again, I am on Twitter at MikeBrimalley1, so go follow me there. I am also setting up my Hurricane uh, Live cameras uh, later, probably tomorrow or early, or probably later tonight or early tomorrow morning. Our live weather station is active and we'll be providing updates on the weather station and everything else as uh, Hurricane Isaias approaches Florida. So again, we will be doing a lot here. This is the first of three updates for today. I'll have one roughly around 3 o'clock Eastern Time and then another one around 8 o'clock uh, Eastern Time this evening. All right. Hope you all have a great rest of your morning and early afternoon. I am Michael Romali. Stay safe, everyone. Go follow me on Twitter at Romali one and links will be down in the description down below. Thank you for everyone. Your support is greatly uh, appreciated and is absolutely incredible. And I will see you guys back here at around 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Stay safe, everyone. I'll see you later.